Hi, and welcome to the Folk Music Academy. My name is Natalie Haas, and we're going to talk today about the differences between classical and folk cello. Probably many of you cellists out there come from a classical background, as I do myself. Um, it's pretty rare to find a cellist who hasn't uh, started with classical music. But there are a few key differences uh, that make this style uh, sound different, and, and largely the techniques themselves are the same, but it's kind of the approach um, that is different here. So one of the main things I would say that makes this different from classical music is the use of vibrato. In folk music, uh, we're not so much interested in producing a big tone for like a, a large auditorium. We're, we're more concerned with rhythm and getting people to dance. So it's very rare to use vibrato unless you're in like a slow air or specifically just using it as a color. Um, hardly ever are you going to vibrate, um, especially in these faster tunes like uh, you barely have time to vibrate anyway. So. Um, if you're, if you're adding vibrato to that, you're basically just losing out on time that you could be adding ornaments and other kind of stylistic um, things that are going to make this sound like it comes from a place. So yeah, no vibrato. Um, just shut that off as, as much as you're able. Um, the other thing I think is that uh, the sound that we're craving here, as I said, is very much based on rhythm, but it's also kind of a brighter sound because we want to sound like a fiddle as much as possible. I've, I've spent my life kind of trying to imitate fiddle players, um, and a lot of that is using open strings, whereas normally in classical music you would go for the fingered note, so you're kind of hiding that harshness of the open string, and you're maybe vibrating it too. But in folk music, we want that harsh, bright sound um, so that it sounds more like a fiddle. So anytime you have the option to play something as an open string, you probably should, unless there's a really good reason not to. Um, for example, like if you're uh, playing a fingering that's going to be easier by going across the string and, and using a fingered note instead of that kind of thing. You see how that second option was a lot brighter, but it's it's more cumbersome in terms of the shifts. So in that case, I might use a fingered note, but otherwise, I'm always going to go for the open string. Um, the other thing is, as I said, in classical music, you want to kind of produce a big sound um, by using like the entire length of your bow. In folk music, you're, the, the part of the bow that you're in is really going to be determined by the sound that you're trying to create. Normally we want to have more attack so that, as I said, these rhythms are what are the most important thing here. So getting kind of down further in the bow where you have more weight um, is better um, rather than you hear how it's and you get a bit of better punch at the beginning of your bow strokes and so that that's kind of helping to define the rhythm in a really clear way that you wouldn't get out of this part of the bow. Um, you might play at the tip if you're trying to create a, a, a more mysterious sound you know um, as like a variation um, on a, a repeat of a tune or something but for the most part kind of playing towards the balance point, middle of the bow, using less bow. Especially for um, separate bows, when you have slurs, you can kind of use more bow length, but in general, you want to just um, kind of play with short bows and not a lot of movement, and but a lot of bite to the beginning of each bow stroke, so the rhythm is really clear. Whereas in classical music, if I were to see that printed on a page, I would probably go like. So you hear the difference. I'm also maybe dotting a little bit. That was a, a jig. Um, they kind of tend to dot their jigs in Scotland. 
Um, but these are the things that you wouldn't know if you just saw a piece of music on a music stand. It would look like just straight eighth notes. And probably played with a big vibrato and nice big tone kind of towards the bridge also because you're trying to project to a, an audience in a, in a big hall. But in folk music, I tend to, as you can see from the amount of rosin here, I tend to play higher up on the string, so my contact point is a little higher, just because I don't have to work as hard here to get a big tone. And tone is not really what I'm going for anyway, it's, it's rhythm, like I said. So uh, playing a little higher, maybe even at the end of the fingerboard or even slightly above it, is going to be great for these fast tunes, because you can really go fast and, and get a decent tone without having to work to get the, the string to speak. So I still get a fair amount of tone up there, whereas if I was down here, it would sound really gritty and harsh. Um, I'd have to kind of slow it down to get those notes to speak. So to play fast, bringing up your contact point and using small bows is um, a really good way to do it. Um, a couple other things that are different from classical music. I'm going to talk um, about chopping a lot. And um, in the chopping video, I show you that the bow hold is very different. It doesn't have that bent thumb. It's a straight thumb. So that's quite different. The bow angle is a little bit different. It's down here instead of out here. Um, so for chopping, there's definitely some technical differences. Um, the other thing that we use a lot uh, in folk cello, if, if you're using it as an accompaniment tool for playing chords, you're going to be doing a lot of barring to get kind of a bigger chordal sound. Um, and one thing that is different here is in the left hand, when you do these barred chords, if you're just pressing down with your finger, you have to really work hard to, to kind of get the weight you need. So one thing that I'll allow myself to do, which I would never do in classical music, is kind of collapse this arm down and let my thumb kind of come out the other side of the neck so that my arm weight is contributing to the weight I need to press that finger down over two strings. <laughs> So it's almost like more like a guitar. If I were holding this as a guitar player would, I would probably do that same thing of bringing the thumb up and over so that I could get these barred chords. Um, yeah, so that's going to be a little different. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, maybe one other thing I should mention is ornaments. When you're playing ornaments, especially in Celtic music, you want them to be kind of a rhythmic effect. Whereas, you know, ornaments, I guess, are used more in Baroque music. Um, and, you know, they're kind of more spread out, used as like a color. In folk music, they're used as a rhythmic device. So we want to kind of squish them together, especially in Celtic music, I, I would say. So all of your ornaments are going to be very rapid acting with the fingers so that you're just barely grazing the string. Whereas in classical music, you probably want to hear the pitch a little bit more. But in folk music, we're trying to imitate the sound of a bagpipe, at least in Celtic music. Um, so fast acting, rhythmic effect. So every ornament you use has some kind of a rhythmic uh, component to it. Um, and I think that's about it. So, you know, the fundamentals of technique, unless you're chopping, are pretty much the same. By bringing your contact point up, you will allow yourself to play faster with a lot more ease. Just remember to turn that vibrato off and keep it off as much as possible. It's easier said than done.